Well, good morning, Willowbrook. Thank you for joining us for our daily Devo. Today, we're in Mark chapter 12. I love reading through the New Testament a chapter at a time. It takes us one chapter, five days a week, and we'll be through the whole New Testament. But one of the challenges is there's so much great content. I could have done five devotions, or I could have spent about 50 minutes on the devotion this morning to cover everything, but I can't. So I hope that you read through the whole chapter, but I want to focus on just the last part of the narrative, and I want to read it. It's in Mark chapter 12, verses 41 through 44. It says, Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were being put and watched the crowds putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put two very small copper coins worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more in this treasury than all of the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she gave out of her po poverty, putting in everything she had to live on. Now, again, this is Jesus' last week in Jerusalem before his crucifixion, and his disciples are with him. He's spending time at the temple, and he's there with them. When where he's sitting, which would have most likely been the court of the Gentiles, he can see where they have these called offering boxes, but they would look like trumpets. And you could come and you could put offerings in it. These were usually coins or always coins. And so when you drop them in, they made quite the clinging sound. A matter of fact, that they were shaped kind of like trumpets even stood there. So a person who had a lot of money or a lot to give would come and just clink, 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 clink. And everybody would look and see and they'd be impressed. Wow, which, look how much they have given. And yet here's a widow who comes in and she puts in two just small copper coins, about 164th of a denaro. That's the day's wage. Not very much. But all of a sudden, Jesus calls all his disciples to make sure they saw what just happened. And he was incredibly impressed because the others may have given of their abundance, but she gave all that she had. See, sometimes I think we feel like our contributions of our time, of our talent, of our gifts only are related to compared to others. And unless we have a lot to give, a lot to do, then what we give, what we do, doesn't really matter. And that isn't true. See, God can take something small and use it in a great way. We saw that, uh, you know, again, where God took the, the lunch of a, of a little boy and fed thousands of people with it. God can take a little and do a lot. But again, God isn't comparing us to others. He's comparing us to what we can do. And never us underestimate what God can do. I remember years ago being at a conference and hearing then a pastor share who was the pastor of the largest church in the world at the time in Seoul, South Korea. And he shared when the church was going through in the, in the mid-80s, they were doing their first major building project. God had blessed the church. They were reaching thousands for Christ. They knew they needed to build, so they leveraged everything. A loan from the, uh, you know, from the bank with guarantees from people who said they'd give so much. And all of a sudden, there was a, a recession in the United States, a depression in Korea, and people just stopped giving. So they couldn't make the payments. They had to stop the building, and it looked like the bank would literally foreclose on the church, take back the property, and they would have nothing. The pastor had called a prayer meeting, and literally all that was there then was the foundation, the concrete that had been poured. And they sat on it, and they worshiped, and then they prayed and just said, God has to do a miracle. Well, in a time of silence, an older widow woman stood up and said she didn't have much, she goes, but she did have a bowl for her rice and she had chopsticks. And she said she needed her bowl, but she would sell her chopsticks because she could eat rice with cardboard or she could eat it with her fingers. But she wanted to give that to God. And then a person stood up and said, I'll give $100 for those chopsticks. Another person said, I'll give 1000 Another person, I'll give 10000 And I think finally one said, I'll give 50000 They gave the church 50000 and they gave her back the chopsticks. But what it did is the pastor said it was like a dam broke. All of a sudden, people who were scared about the economy and thought they had nothing realized they had so much more. And it, a tidal wave of, wave of giving came in that allowed them to write their, their loan. It allowed them to make, uh, you know, go forward and build this worship center that literally has been used to, to win now millions to Christ. See, that was a woman who may have sat there and thought, really, I'm going to sell my chopsticks? And yet those two chopsticks, like those two coins, were impressive 
And God used it to move the whole congregation. I was blessed when uh, I was serving in a church in the 90s, and there was a guy there who was a, uh, a friend. He was older. He, he owned several businesses, but he was a really nice guy, and he, he was a giver to the church, and he was always there for us. And one day he said, why don't you hang out with me for a day? So for a day, I kind of hung out with him when he did business. And so we started talking about finances and other things. And uh, and he just talked about, he said, Steve, I don't believe you can outgive God any more than you can outlove God. And then he shared with me something that he, he didn't want me to share with everyone. He, you don't know who he is, so it's okay to share it, that God had impressed him that he had the gift of giving. Now, a lot of people don't realize that is one of the gifts in the Bible. And, and that gift is the ability to acquire but also the ability to be a conduit, to be a blessing to others and a blessing to God's kingdom. And he really believed that God had made him to be able to acquire wealth so he could, distrib- he could be used by God to direct it where God wanted. And he shared with me that God had impressed him to put a circle around his income, which in today's dollars would be about a quarter million dollars. And he said, Steve, what that means is that I keep the first quarter million and I give everything else to God. Now, of course, I'm a young youth pastor. I'm thinking, I'll take that deal. But what, as we talked, there were many years in which he gave two, three, or four times more than he kept. See, he knew with that amount, he could pay all of his expenses. He had retirement. Everything was taken care of. He, he felt amazingly blessed. But he said, if I just gave God 10%, I'm not letting God use this gift I have given. And I believe God is blessing me so I can be a blessing to others. So listen, maybe you're that person God is amazingly blessed uh, to be able to acquire. You're like this guy. He just had that Solomon touch. He touched it and it won. But rather than see it as just something to acquire more stuff for himself, he said, God, how can I invest this in your kingdom? And that's what he did. Or maybe you're like that widow. You don't have much. And you're thinking, what can I do? And understand, others may never see, but God does. And he's impressed when we're faithful with what he's given. Well, guys, I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much for joining us for our Daily Devo. And I'm so glad you're on this journey. Continue and have a blessed day.